In the last video, we looked at an introduction to the trapezium rule. In this video, we're just going to work for a question that involves the trapezium rule. This is question number one, and we're told the diagram below shows part of the curve with equation y is equal to x plus 2 to x. So here's our diagram just here. In part A, we're asked to fill in the missing values in the table below for y is equal to x plus 2 to the x. So we've got the x values of 0, 1 and 2, and we need to find the corresponding y values. So all I'm going to do is substitute in x is equal to 0. That will give me 0. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. So when x is 0, y will be equal to 1. Now we've got x is 1, so 1 in here, that'll give me 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2, so 1 plus 2, that's going to give me 3. If I sub in 2, that's 2, that's going to be 4, that will be 6. For the more problematic functions, you might want to substitute it into a calculator. So, for example, if you want to set it up, what we could have done is had now, this is going to be the, where I um, insert the x or substitute in the x, and then we could have just had this now and swapped it over. So all I've done now, for example, on the first one is substituted in zero, and that will give us the value. So if it's more challenging, you can just simply put it into a calculator. We don't need to on this one as we can calculate them mentally. So that's what we end up with. In part B, we're asked to use the trapezium rule with two strips to find an estimate for the area trapped under the curve y is equal to x plus 2 to x between the lines x equals 0 and x is equal to 2 using the values found in part A. So what this is asking me to do is use the trapezium rule now and draw two trapeziums. So what we're going to do, and I'll just draw these up, we're going from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2. If I've got two strips, as we saw in the last video, that gives rise to three ordinates. So my first strip is going to be from 0 to 1, and will come up like so, and that will be the trapezium there. Then the next one will be from 1 to 2, and will come up like so, and then we can see that that will come down like so. So that's what we're going to do. We saw that the trapezium rule could be written in a more simplified form, and we can say that the area was approximately equal to h over 2. We had now the first plus the last plus two lots of the other values added. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. So other values added. So values added. So what was h? Well, h is this distance right here. We split this particular interval into equal widths to give the trapezium its height. More formally, if we have now the integral of y dx from a to b, we can say that h is equal to b minus a over n, where n is the number of strips you're using. So if we look at what I've done just here, all I've done is gone ahead. I've got now a distance of 2. So it's 2 minus 0 over 2, which is going to be giving me now 1. So that now is where we're going from. We're going from 0 to 2. We've got two strips. So each of these strips has a value of h of 1. So plugging in, the area is going to be approximately equal to 1 over 2. The first value, well, the first value is going to be 1, plus the last value, which is going to be 6, plus two lots of all of the others. Well, there's only one other, so we're simply going to substitute that in, and we can calculate this. So all I've done now is h, that is the size, this height right here, of the trapezium, the first plus the last plus two lots of what's left in the middle. So that's going to give 6 plus 6 is 12 plus 1 is 13. So the area is approximately equal to 13 over 2. And that will be units squared. So that's all I've done. Okay, now uh, in part C it says fill in the missing values in the table below for y is equal to x plus 2 to the x. So we have some of these from the first part of the question. So we know that 0 gave us 1. We had 1 gave us 3, and we had now that 2 gave us 6. 
So if I substitute in here, what we've got is now, and I'll put this in. So if I put it in here, what we've got this time is for 0.5. So 0.5, and often you'll be told to give these answers to three significant figures. In later questions, we will look at that level of accuracy. So I'm going to put 1.914. So 1.914. Then we're going to put in 1.5. So 1.5 can go in here. That's the value of x. So 1.5 is going in here. And that is going to give me now 4.328. So 4.328. So 4.328. So we've done that part. In part D, we need to use the trapezium rule with four strips to find an estimate for the area trapped under the curve y equals x plus 2 to x between the lines x equals 0 and x is equal to 2 using the values found in part C. So what we're doing this time, if I just go ahead and take these out, this time we've got now four strips. Remember, four strips will give us five intervals. So if we have n strips, we have n plus 1, uh, n plus 1 uh, ordinates to do. So this time what I'm doing is making the trapezians, and we'll see this like so. So that's what we'll have, like that. We'll have the first one, then we'll have the second one. And you can see that these trapeziums now, the top of them is getting closer and closer to the curvature of the curve. So if I drew these up, we obviously wouldn't do this in the question. I'm just showing now how we would uh, we would form these. And we can see that this uh, estimate for the area is going to get better. If I zoomed in, again, we would still have some, uh, some uh, space between the top of the trapezium and the curve. That's why it is an estimate. And that's why I'm using this line here. It's approximately equal to. So... Let's go ahead and use this. So if we now consider what the value of h is, we can see from the table before that it was 1. It's now become 1 half. So we were looking at the integral now from 0 to 2. So what we've got then is 2 minus 0. But now we're doing this over 4 strips. So if you want a more formal approach to finding the value of h, we can see it's done like so. It's b minus a over n, where n is the number of strips. So let's find uh, an estimate. So the area is approximately equal to h over 2. So it's 1 half over now 2. Then we'll have our first. So our first is going to be 1. So first plus the last, which is 6, plus 2 lots of now the middle values added up. So 1.914 plus 3 plus now the 4.328. So let's go ahead and do this. So this is going to give me now 1 half divided by 2 is going to be a quarter or 0 0.25. Then we're going to have 1 plus 6, which is 7. So 7. Then we're going to have 2 lots now of. So plus 2 lots of the 1 point. So 1 point 1.914 plus 3 plus now the 4.328. Uh, so let's close that off. That looks okay. And that gives us now 6 point, uh, we've got on here 6.371. So the area is approximately equal to 6.371. Uh, Let's just look at that. Uh, so this one here, if we look at this, this is 6.5. So we can see here that by increasing the number of strips, which is increasing the level of accuracy, we're getting closer and closer to it. Um, we could actually integrate this. Um, we, we're yet to learn how to integrate this, but if we really wanted to, we could go ahead and find uh, the value of this. In a later unit, you'll learn how to integrate this. In fact, I'm going to do it just here. Let's, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, I'll just integrate this. So uh, what we can say is the area, and I'm going to find the exact value because I can integrate this particular uh, function here. So I'm going to say the area will be equal to, and this is going to be now the definite integral from 0 to 2. So we're going to have 0 to 2 of x plus 2 to the x. So this bit you're not expected to do, uh, and we're integrating with respect to x. That is going to give me now the area, and we're going to have on here, uh, you can certainly integrate x, that's going to be 1 half x squared. Now if I integrate 2 to the x, that's going to be 1 over the natural log of 2 
multiplied by 2 to the x and we're interested in this from 0 to 2. So I'm going to substitute this in and we'll get the exact value for this. The only reason I'm doing this is just to give you um, the sort of completeness of this. Uh, so if I substitute in 2 here, so putting in 2, uh, that's going to be 2 and then we're going to have plus now 2 to the x which is going to be 4 over the natural log of 2. You'll meet the natural log uh, function later on and then we're going to subtract from that now. Uh, this is going to give me 0. We don't have to put that in but of course if x is 0 that's going to give me 0. And then we'll have plus now 2 to the 0 which is going to be 1 over now the natural log of 2. So this is going to give me the exact value of the area. I'm just including this just to show you what the value will be. So 6.328. So the area is actually 6. So area is actually 6. Point, uh, what did we get? 6.328. So that is uh, correct for DP. So if we look at this right here, this one is getting very close to the actual amount. This one isn't quite as good. So as we increase the number of strips, we increase the accuracy of our answer. Okay, let's move on. Uh, in part E, we need to explain which of the two estimations found in part B and D is closest to the actual area trapped under the curve y equals x plus 2 to x between the lines x equals 0 and x equals 2, giving a reason for our answer. Okay, so the reason uh, it's for the second one is that we've increased the number of strips. So the more strips, the better it fits the curvature of the curve. As you can imagine, those trapeziums, as the, they, the line just here gets smaller and smaller as a result of this value of h getting smaller and smaller, we can actually match it up to the curve pretty well. Okay, so the second one is better, and it would be better, uh, better still if we had more. Okay, in part F it says, how could you make the estimation even more accurate? Well, the answer is increase the number of trapeziums. Or, if you want, increase the number of values of x in this table and the corresponding y values. Okay, in part G we need to state whether the answers found in part B and D, so that's what we've got just here, so here's B and here's D, are now uh, overestimates or underestimates of the area under the curve given a reason for our answer. We discussed this in the last one, uh, in the last video. This particular curve is concave. So if we have it now, if I zoomed in on this, what we would end up seeing, and I'll just draw a quick sketch here. If I have a curve that curves upwards, so it opens upwards, and I put a trapezium under this, if I put one just here, and it's easier to see if, if you have less, uh, less trapeziums uh, because it becomes quite obvious. We can see now that if I chose this red area to be the area under the curve in this point, quite clearly it's going to be an overestimate. The actual area is below the line. So if we had a curve that was concave or opened downwards, so for example if it was like that uh, and I went ahead and drew a trapezium, what we would see is something like so. So let's just draw that. So if I use this trapezium for the area, we can see that this would be an underestimate because, again, this, uh, this part here, we've got an additional bit. So this gives us now an over. So let's just put this on. That's an overestimate. And this is an underestimate. So under underestimate. So if you look back at the curve, the curve right here uh, beforehand, it's curving up. So it's opening upwards. It's concave rather than convex. So this would be an overestimate. And we can see that. Um, we can see that anyway. Not that we would have calculated the actual area, um, but we can see that from there. Uh, so there we go. That's what we'd be asked to do. It's a nice, logical, straightforward uh, function to deal with just here. Um, and that part's done. You might be asked for a percentage error. All we would do is take the actual, subtract away uh, the estimation, uh, and then divide by the actual and times by 100. And we will look at that in a later video. So hopefully that's given you a good insight. I've used the informal approach just here. If you want the more formal approach, check the video before this.